Would you like to know the difference between a cloud architect and a solutions architect? If so, this video is for you. My name's Mike Gibbs, and I've been every kind of architect you can imagine, from a solutions architect, cloud architect, enterprise architect, network architect. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the real difference between a cloud architect and a solutions architect. Now, we're gonna be using the universal definition of a cloud architect, as opposed to the definition that's used at AWS, because they actually have a slightly different definition for a cloud architect. In their organization, a cloud architect is much more like a technical architect, but we're gonna be referring to the rest of the organizations for the most part that exist out there in the difference between a cloud architect and a solutions architect. So the first thing that I want you to understand is there are gonna be, in some cases, very big similarities between these two roles. And in other cases, there's gonna be very major differences. By the end of this video, I think it'll be pretty clear to you why there's far more opportunities for cloud architects than solutions architects. And while you'll typically pay paid more as a cloud architect than you would an AWS solutions architect or an Azure solutions architect because of the role. And that's the difference we're gonna talk about is the role difference. But by the end of this video, you're gonna know which role is right for you, the cloud architect or the solutions architect? So, uh, so let's begin with that. Both roles of the cloud architect and the solutions architect are both executive type roles. So there'll be no hands-on, meaning there won't be, you won't be writing Python scripts, you won't be touching Linux, you won't be touching Terraform or CloudFormation. These are executive roles, these are planning roles, these are design roles, you will not be touching the technology in either. So if I begin with the solutions architect role, the job is system design. Now, I've been a solutions architect, and the solutions architect roles are generally a pre-sales role. So you work for a company, and you design, present, and sell their solutions. So when I worked for Cisco as a solutions architect, I designed, present, and sold Cisco solutions. When I worked at Riverstone as a solutions architect, I designed, present, and sold Riverstone solutions. So what does an AWS solutions architect sell? designs, presents, and sells AWS stuff. And an Azure solutions architect designs, presents, and sells Azure things. So I want you to consider this. The solution architect for the most part is working for a single, single vendor. And for the most part, they design, present, and sell the tools of that vendor. Now that doesn't mean the solutions architect at Cisco won't collaborate with other vendors because of course they would and so would AWS, but generally speaking, the solutions architect is single vendor. So I like to compare architects to physicians because the role is very similar. Here, imagine going to a physician and the physician can uh, prescribe you one company's medication, say from the Pfizer company. Now this company may have 50 of the best medications in the world, but there's 10,000 life-saving medications that are out there. But in this case, the physician's a solutions architect, so they can design, present, and sell your prescription and your plan to you that's inclusive of a single vendor. No. I want you to understand that single company solution architecture from a company working as a solutions architect is typically designing, presenting, and selling a single vendor stuff. Now let's look at the cloud architect. The cloud architect is a vendor agnostic person and they're designing hybrid clouds, hybrid multi-clouds, private clouds, any kind of cloud architecture you can imagine. Now, because the cloud architect is now working on three or four clouds and 98% of all enterprises are multi-cloud and even 89% of all customers are multi-cloud, Please understand, these organizations don't need solutions architects. I don't need anybody that can only focus on one part of my system. I need somebody that can focus on everything if I've got a big picture. Now, that doesn't mean if I'm a company, I wouldn't reach out to AWS for the help of their solutions architects and Azure for the help of their solutions architects and Cisco for the help of theirs. But as a company, I need people that understand multi-cloud because everybody is multi-cloud. Now, why would an organization want to be multi-cloud? And why would you as an architect typically design multi-cloud? Well, one of it is availability because no matter how many availability zones and region you use, a single cloud is a single point of failure. And let's face it, when that cloud gets hacked, has a network failure or a control plane failure, all the cloud goes down. So you typically want to use more than one. But the second reason is, is multiple vendors do things better. 
There are just some things that Cisco does better than Juniper. Juniper does better than Cisco. AWS does better than Azure. Cougar does better than AWS. And I can go on and on. These are all hypotheticals, but there's always someone that does something best. And in a hybrid multi-cloud architecture, which the cloud architect is designing, I can pick the best tools from anybody that's available if I desire. So I can build the best of breed architecture as we typically call it for the cloud architect. And most businesses would use this. So going back to our physician example here, the cloud architect is not like the solutions architect where they have access to one company's medications and treatments. Now the uh, cloud architect physician can use every medication in the entire world, every surgical technique in the entire world, and anything that's necessary to save their patient's life. Now this person can do that because they don't work for a vendor and they are not limited to a single company's solutions. So, and that's typically why. So who would you go to, which doctor? The physician that only had one uh, type of problem solving ability or the physician that could use everything. So that's why typically speaking, you'll have a cloud architect role much more often than a solutions architect role. Now, what does this mean on what you need to know to be good at this and uh, the implications of this? Well, the cloud architect role is gonna be a more strategic role. It's gonna have a greater business focus and it's gonna focus much more on the end-to-end -end solution than, and then as, and that, than anything would be on a single cloud or a single vendor's technology. Now, I want you to think about this. Now, that cloud architect is really dealing with enterprise plus challenges, which means in a normal enterprise, there might be 100 applications from various vendors, multiple companies providing security services, multiple companies providing networking services, and everything you can possibly think of. So now that cloud architect has to focus on a bigger picture, which means that cloud architect needs better leadership skills. That cloud architect needs a bigger team of people that have more expertise in various areas because you can't be an expert on 100 companies' technologies on all of them. It's just not possible unless you can live a few thousand years. So it's always important for all architects to be able to build a team, solutions architect for cloud architects, but for the cloud architect, it's much more important because you're going to be on much bigger, more sophisticated uh, solutions and projects that really matter. So now you get it. For the most part, the solutions architect is predominantly single company's tools and the cloud architect is multiple companies' tools, but you can do both. There's lots of opportunities you can do throughout your career. I've enjoyed the sales aspects of solutions architect roles, where you work for a company, you're part of the sales team, and in many cases, you get commissions and bonuses based on sales. I've had that fun, but I've also enjoyed that big cloud architect and that big enterprise role, fo focus role architect where I'm focusing on the big picture and everything to help that organization and strategy. Which one is right for you? Let me know in the comments section below. If you want to become a cloud architect, a solutions architect, an enterprise architect, a security architect, or an AI architect, join us for a free architect webinar. The link is in the description of this video. We'll go over the role. We'll talk about what we do as architects, the skill you need for the various architecture roles. And then we'll answer any questions we can about you to assist you with your technology career. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your technology career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I'll see you in another video about architecture very soon.